TED Talks are awesome. Hi guys, welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. I hope you like today's video. Today I'm going to be telling you about five awesome TED Talks that I love to watch that I often recommend to people. They're not necessarily my absolute favorite of all time videos, but they're definitely ones that I recommend watching. And at the moment, it's school holidays where I teach here in lovely New South Wales, the state of New South Wales in Australia. So if you're one of my international people that like to watch the channel, I very much apologize. I'm not trying to rub it into your face, but we have two weeks break at the moment, which is lovely. And of course we know teachers don't do any work on holidays, right? Uh -huh. So I thought I'd share some videos with you guys thinking you might have a little bit of extra time on your hands that you might want to watch these ones with. Before we get into it though, I just want to let you know that today I'm going to be using a bit of new software that I've got on the computer and I'm going to be testing it out. So if you notice that there's any glitches or if you can't hear me very well with the sound, pop it in the comments below so I know so that I can revamp that as I um, go through and learn how to use it properly uh, and let me know maybe what kind of device you're watching this on or what kind of social media that you're watching it on so I can determine if there's any kind of compatibility issues at all. Um, if you are watching this from Twitter or Facebook, you'll need to open it up into YouTube to be able to follow any of the descriptions below or to comment. Um, and I'll also put all of the links to all of the TED Talks that I'm recommending today in the description below, along with my Twitter, my Facebook, uh, and my Pinterest. So if you want to follow me, just go ahead, click on those things. And I'd very much appreciate it if you'd like to share and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. It's always good feedback to know that these videos are helping people. And thank you so much to all the lovely people that have been messaging me or commenting and saying that these videos are either helping them or reinforcing what they're doing in the classroom, or they just generally enjoy uh, the topics that I share with. So we'll get into it. I'm going to flip over to the other software and I'm going to get started. I'm not doing these in any particular order. It's not number one to number five or anything like that, but I'm giving you five that I always love watching. So I'm going to switch over now. Okay. So the first one I wanted to share with you is this one. It's called, I got 99 problems. Palsy is just one. And it's by this wonderful woman, Maysoon, who is uh, I'm partly a stand up comedian as well. And she definitely gets the audience going. Hello, Ted Women, what's up? Not good enough. Hello, Ted Women, what is up? I'll just pause it. Obviously, I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I can't do that copyright issues, but I'm going to take you through. And she just talks through what life was like with her um, growing up with CP and the things that she sort of had to learn to deal with and it's not a sob story it's actually quite hilarious she's so funny and in your face and insightful and obviously you can see all the women there in the audience laughing and she just talks as you do in a TED talk she just talks and she really opens herself up and makes you think about things differently and realize that you know not everyone's a a, 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 a heartwarming story I guess and she's very much the realist. And it, this one goes for, let's say this is about 14 minutes, this one. So if you've got time for that one, I'll put that one in the link. So from Maysoon's TED Talk, I really just got out of it uh, an interesting perspective about culture, her cultural background, and what that brought to the table in terms of having a disability or a, um, a diagnosed disability. And that her upbringing really led her down a different path than what it might have been in, in, in another culture, in another family, in another country even, depending on the healthcare that you would have. So I, most of all though, she's just funny. She's really, really funny and, and it's a nice lighthearted one to watch. So um, I definitely recommend clicking on that one if you want a, a feel good scenario. If you've got anyone that's um, got CP that you've ever worked with or taught or in your school or anything like that because it's a good good way of viewing um, that disability. Okay, this one is called Coming Out of Your Closet. It's Ash Beckham and it, the, the title is a little misleading because it's not just about coming out of the closet. When you go through, she talks about this time when she was working at a cafe and there was this this little girl, like you can see up here, I type in TED Talk Pancake Girl. It's always the way that I remember this talk um, because she talks about this little, I think it was an eight-year-old girl coming up and asking her if she was a boy or if she was a girl and just 
a moment that she sort of had a realization in in how we communicate with each other and how we see each other but um she's a very good talker and she touches on a few different topics which are i guess quite relevant at the moment um even though this was published a while ago i mean you can see it's got over five million views and she i guess she really goes into how we think about these things so you can see here she's talking about the brain and how um, adrenaline and cortisol work in our brains and how that affects how we think and communicate with each other and it's one of those ones that kind of touches on science and touches on the heart as well at the same time and she relates a few personal stories of her own as she goes through this presentation which is really good with ash beckham's talk it's it's quite down she's very calm she's a good talker it's very serious um when she gets into it she does have a few light-hearted moments in it which is good so that it keeps some consistency and you don't come out of it um feeling pretty low she has great messages in it the best message that i got out of her video was the concept of hard or actually i should say the concept of harder and that no one has harder than someone else and after watching her video, I really look at things differently, especially when I find moments are hard or when other people are expressing to me that they're going through a hard time. As an executive, I need to make sure that I'm taking care of my team, taking care of my staff and looking out for my school, the students, the parents, everyone. And no one can ever really say that something is harder than someone else's scenario. You know, being diagnosed with cancer isn't necessarily harder than um, finding out your parents are getting divorced. It all depends on your context. Um, finding out that you can't have children, is that harder than finding out that, or being told that your partner is about to be deployed to Afghanistan for a nine month tour? Everyone has their own hard. And if we keep competing with each other in these levels of hard, it just makes things ridiculous and unobtainable and unsuccessful. And if we're going to set up our kids for success, we need to make sure that they get that concept as well about hard being different to know that, you know, what's hard for one kid in writing might be easy for another kid. And we talk to our kids about this all the time, about growth mindset and saying that I might not be good at it now, but I might be good at it later. I can be good at it with practice. So that, that concept of hard and harder being a relative term really changed my outlook on things and help with my growth mindset and seeing how other people are dealing with situations as well. All right, my next one is the amazing Temple Grandin and it's called The World Needs All Kind of Minds. And if you haven't heard of who Temple Grandin is, I'm going to assume that you're not um, working with or living with anyone that has autism. Um, most people are in that sort of circle know exactly who Temple Grandin is. She was uh, one of the first people, I guess, that you were diagnosed with Asperger's and um, being high functioning autism. She didn't talk until she was four years old and now she is a public speaker. She went to uh, college and she got degrees and she was um, a pioneer in terms of the uh, animal handling industry in Amer America and she designed new ways of being able to move animals along the production line so that they were safe and calm and secure and um, being treated humanely. But she's an absolute pioneer in terms of autism as well and how people think because she can articulate how she see thing, sees things in her mind. And she really speaks very, very well in helping people understand exactly how people with autism think, how they feel, how they respond to things, the neurological patterns, why they are there. It's a 20 minute watch and it's 20 minutes of your life that you will absolutely be glad that you spent watching this video. I think she's a wonderful woman. I'm so glad that she's out there for people with autism. Um, and this is definitely a, a video that you want to watch. It's very insightful. Temple Grandin. I can't rave enough about Temple Grandin. And if you haven't seen the daytime movie that Claire Dane starred in, I highly recommend doing it. If you are interested in any more information about working with kids with autism, I do have a video that I've done earlier. So check out my um, previous videos to see that one. And I highly recommend just um, watching that one with an open mind and really getting an understanding of how our kids think and realizing that she is high functioning and she is an absolute advocate for helping all kids on the spectrum and making sure everyone's involved and inclusive. And she's an absolute pioneer that I'm very grateful we have um, for our kids with autism. 
Okay, this video is Alexa Mead talking at TED and it's called Your Body Is My Canvas. And I'm a very big fan of Alexa Mead's art. I often try and incorporate some of her art styles into the classroom. And you can see what she does is she paints people, physically paints onto them and then photographs them. And the insight that she has is that children can often tell that this is a 3D um, scenario before adults do. So this is like a final product of what it looks like, but that's actually a person there. That's the, everything's painted. The background's painted, their glasses are painted, their skin is painted, their clothes are painted. And it's a really interesting concept and she does it with all sorts of things. And um, she talks about how she goes through it. She's not um, necessarily someone that, you, you know, might inspire you if, not, if you're not very much into art, but she just definitely looks at the world in a different way and, and brings that to light with her art and I love this one the milk bath there and she has a few stories on how she does these things so um, she's an interesting one to watch so from Alexa's artwork you can see that she's got some stuff that's a little risque and not so great for the classroom but I mean if you go in and find some of the videos on her website or the pictures on her website and just download them separately to show a class they're so engaging kids love that concept of a person physically being painted and then photographed and then seeing them painted out in the real world with real objects and landscapes and cityscapes and they love to get into it so when I've taught this in the classroom the first lesson that I've done is gone out to oh, sorry the first thing that I do is paint the background the kids paint the background and I usually get them to pick two or three colors and just do a wash of colors as the background kind of keeping it really simple and then we go and collect a bunch of dried leaves and paint on top of the leaves not sticking it on or anything they just lay it on top and then they have to figure out how they're going to photograph it so that it looks 2d and usually that means standing on a chair getting up high or putting the work down low and then they've got to navigate around things like shadows and light and other furniture and how to hold it and keep it still and make sure that the you can't see the underside of the leaf that might not be painted it's a great problem solving activity they connect it to the artwork that she made and then they think really creatively about what they could do in the future. So one class that I had ended up painting clothes, t-shirts, and then we hung it on a little, uh, what do you call it? A, like a mini clothesline that you use to go camping with. So it looked like a proper clothesline. It was just really, really small. So we hung that up and then they had all their pictures around and they look fantastic. And then you can go on further from there. Another activity I did was we painted wooden the environmentally friendly wooden cutlery that you have at parties and stuff and then paper plates painted all of that up laid it down as a setting and then they had to take a photo from on top as well to do that and then they relate it that way it's such a fun activity but yeah just make sure you've got the right photos from alexa <laughs> okay i'm cheating this one is ken robinson and his most popular one is, you know, do schools kill creativity? Sir Ken Robinson, I should say. This guy is just such a realist. He's a forward thinker, but he's passionate about the arts and creativity and wants to make sure that our kids are learning in a way that keeps makes them forward thinkers, that makes them literally the future. And so you've got um, the do, do schools kill creativity. There's how to escape education's death valley, bring on the learning revolution, life is your talents discovered so he's done a fair few ted talks and like you find him anywhere there's heaps of interviews on there obviously this one is very very popular if you haven't seen this i'm going to assume that you're a new graduate or you've been living under a rock um these other ones obviously you just flow on uh, and watch all of those and I, i've watched this one so many times that i'm sure i'm probably very high in this 13 million views there um and really i i can't give it justice um to just sort of click on it and show you some stills there okay. okay so i did cheat with sir ken robinson that wasn't one video there were a few videos there but really once you watch one you're going to want to watch the others as well he's very inspirational he gives a bit of history about education and how we've come down the line and where we need to be going and what we think about jobs and testing and how creative we're being in schools and how much time we're really giving to the arts and how it's valued and what we're doing for our children and he's very very passionate he's a great person to listen to he's got a good tone of voice he's got lots of wonderful ideas he's got all the ideas that we want to take back to the classroom however all we can see is red tape that's going on um, 
So if we can find ways to take bits and pieces of what he's saying and use that to rejuvenate what we're doing and think critically about what we're doing in the classroom and be creative with our teaching styles, they're great videos to watch. They all go for about 20 minutes each though, so you'd have to set aside some time, but I will link every single video in the description below. That's all I've got for you tonight though, guys, it's holidays and I'm keen to get back to my R&R. &R. If you have any TED Talks that you think are amazing that you'd love to share, please pop them in the comments below. I'd love to watch them while I've got some extra time as well. There's always amazing ones out there. There's so many good ones out there that you can never get through all of them and some can really surprise you. So please share. Please share this video with your other colleagues or friends if you think it was good or if you think they might benefit from seeing some of those TED Talks as well. Thank you again to all of my subscribers. If you haven't done that and if you've stayed till the end here, you might like what I've got to share. So click the buttons below and I hope to see you guys in the next video. I'll put a link to one of my other teaching videos at the top there and my button down the bottom if you want to subscribe. Don't forget to check out Clever Pickles below, which is my kids educational channel with lots of fun maths games. Okay, guys. Thanks. Bye.